Minister of the Morning, Gautam Trivedi, co-founder and managing partner at Napin Capital is with us. Gautam, thank you so much for joining in. I mean, who would have thought we've been discussing this with our guests, right? Deja vu feelings, mini 2008 feelings, call it what you want. Uh, but uh, I think one of our earlier guests made a very valid point that the thing is that everybody's a little more prepared. Central bankers, market participants, we as commentators, you tell us, uh, how are you approaching things, watching this entire news flow play out? Because we still have the U.S. Fed ahead. We don't know what's happening with these mid-sized U.S. banks. So given the uncertainty, what's the approach you're taking to the market? Yeah, good morning, Surbhi. Uh, uh, good to be on your show. I think the markets are in a very precarious condition right now, even uh, notwithstanding the bailout of Credit Suisse by UBS. That apart, but I think the problem with the smaller banks, regional banks in the U.S. is far from over. If you look at uh, First Republic Bank, for example, that rallied Thursday uh, after the $30 billion investment, but fell as much as 32% on Friday. That stock year to date alone is down 81%. And what's worse is S&P has now cut its credit rating with junk status uh, and has warned that another rating downgrade is possible. So clearly, I think that unfortunately is, is a problem. There are only so many banks that the US can actually bail out if you think of all of the U.S. Uh, uh, smaller banks or outside of the top 25 banks in the United States, uh, collectively they account for 70 percent of all construction and land development loans. So it's a very big element of the real estate sector, which itself is having its own challenges given the rate hikes. So I think there are uh, uh, problems in the United States. And as we all know, whether we like it or not, what happens in the U.S. ends up hurting the rest of the world. And I think at this point of time, uh, given where global uh, uh, markets are, I'd be very careful about putting money incrementally into the market. I think it's better to wait and watch. The, in fact, year to date, uh, you know, just to underline my point about the fact that the equity markets are so uncertain at this point, year to date, the best performing asset class actually has been Bitcoin, which is up 51%, way outperforming the S&P 500, which is up 2.5%, uh, way outperforming gold, which is only up 4%. So that tells you where uh, the mood is globally for uh, equity markets at this point. Okay, well, oh, all right. Once we start talking about Bitcoin, you know where things are headed, right? For equity markets. I mean, I haven't heard, I haven't heard a conversation about Bitcoin in a while. The fact that you're talking about alternate asset classes. Uh, so what do you do then? Because fixed income is another place where perhaps, you know, there's been outperformance compared to equities. Gold has been doing really well. At a time when now the chatter is growing from a mild recession to perhaps a full-blown recession in the U.S. And then there is this yeah. banking turmoil to reckon with. Uh, where do you put your money? Yeah, you know, here's the thing. I think uh, you brought the point uh, and a very valid point about uh, fixed income. And if you look at uh, uh, over the past about six months in particular and, and more so going forward, I think uh, fixed income has become a real alternative to equity markets. So since uh, the pandemic, when rates fell as much as they did, uh, the equity market seemed to be the only asset class that where people actually could make incremental money. That clearly has not happened. Over the last 12 months, the uh, uh, market in India has been pretty much flat. Uh, year to date, the Nifty is down 6.5%. So when you look at all of these numbers, uh, fixed income today, if you look at Sriram Finance, I was on, over the weekend looking at, uh, I was on their website, and I found something very interesting. As they're offering a 60-month uh, non-cumulative deposit uh, at 8.5%. If you're a senior citizen, you get another 50 basis points. If you're a woman, uh, it's another 10 basis points. So cumulatively, a non-cumulative rather, you end up making an IRR of 9.10%. Mind you, this is pre-tax. If you go on for the cumulative deposit option, it gives you a 10.07%. Now, I think these are very attractive numbers, depending, of course, on what your income tax uh, uh, bracket is. But the fact is, I think these are, the fixed income increasingly is becoming a very viable alternative for a whole swath of middle class uh, India. Imagine mm. that, huh? Mm. Nigel <laughs> Sonia, Gotham's uh, telling us about fixed income products mm. that are returning 10%. We do yeah. live in very interesting times, don't yeah. we? And before that, Bitcoin. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, so the Bitcoin guys, I mean, they're the ones <laughs> taking the argument home, right? That this is the reason we don't need central banks. This is the reason it needs to be a one-on-one, -on -one, the whole blockchain. Again, a separate argument altogether. Yeah, you know, in fact, Gautam, uh, you were one of the first uh, who came on the channel, one of those cautious voices who had warned that real estate as well as fixed income, it could, uh, you know, pull out some money uh, from the equity markets. And you were rather cautious, yeah. so good on that call. I recall we spoke in October, we spoke in November as well. And you said we're not out of the woods, be very, very cautious on equities. 
some part of that yeah. is playing out, uh, Gautam. But uh, you also sure. didn't rule out the fact that maybe we could revisit 15,200 on the Nifty. Um, do you think that that possibility, the probability has increased now, given the fact that now global equities have gone in a bit of a tizzy? Yeah, you know, I, I, it's hard to actually put a number to it, and, and I don't want to go down that path. Mm. But mm. here's the thing. I mean, if you look at, uh, as I said, year to day, the Nifty is down 6.5% in local currency terms. And this is in spite of the fact that domestic mutual funds have bought year to date $8 <clears throat> billion worth of stock. Foreigners, of course, have sold 2.3. But even if you work that math out, the market is still down. So that clearly tells you that maybe it's retail investors that are actually incrementally exiting the market and putting incrementally money into fixed income products, as we discussed. If you look at even valuations, even after a 20% correction in MSCI India, which is now on a CY uh, 24, calendar 24, at trading at 7.2 times, which is almost exactly the same as the S&P 500, uh, we're still at 88% premium over MSCI China, which is at 9.1 times. So I think there is uh, even now a valuation uh, issue, which is not completely gone in spite of the 20% correction in the market. Your caution is uh, well taken. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Okay, for uh, you know, every incremental 100 rupees you're getting, uh, I understand that quite a bit of it would be parked in fixed income, but how much would you put in equities? Uh, and if you do, then then what parts of the market? Where do you start nibbling? Because let's, let's admit it. I mean, there is a, at least the valuations aren't running away like they usually do in the Indian market. Yeah. So I think, yes, yes. You know, before I answer that, let me caveat that with two, two problems. We have, uh, as they call it, the... Uh, Demo I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Democles swords hanging annually over India. One is the, what's going to be the price of oil this year, uh, the average price that is. And the second, of course, is the monsoon. So, you know, those are the two issues uh, that I need to caveat every year, every time uh, when I when I think of where the market will be. But here's the thing, if I, you know, the, the performance of the Nifty 50 is a little deceiving because if you look at the broader market, the BSE 500 stocks, uh, more than 60% of the stocks are down 20% or more from their respective 52-week highs. Believe it or not, 184 stocks are down more than 30% from their respective 52-week highs. So yes, mm. the, the correction is ongoing. I don't think we're done yet. Uh, at this point, I would urge investors to be very stock-specific focused. And as, as, as stocks fall and the prices at which they wanted to enter uh, start getting attractive, I think that's the time to start building up a position in that specific stock. Okay. B by the way, the market is getting ugly now. So remember the September low that we hit last year was around 16,818. And we're not too far away from that. We're at 16,968. It's a fall of 130 points right now. Mm -hmm. So steep sell-off is what you're seeing in the market at the moment. And nothing is spared, really. Bank Nifty is down 300 points. Mid-caps are down 200 points. Looks like, uh, Gautam, there's some basket selling that's happening because, you know, no sector spared. Banks, IT, consumption, all under pressure right now. Uh, this is, I mean, 2008 in, in hindsight was a great time to buy and build portfolios and I'm guessing this time could be no different. So tell us about some pockets where you would nibble into now. Uh, are you looking at banks yeah. in a big way? Are you looking at IT, consumption? Uh, where do your preferences yeah. lie? So, you know, we are, we are in a situation right now where we're actually witnessing a tale of two very different Indias. At one hand, you've got uh, DLF announcing 13, over 1,300 apartments at... Uh, uh, almost a million dollars or more being sold out in flat three days. Uh, you have Mercedes-Benz that announced that India will be the fastest growing market. At the same time, you have pain in r rural India. So very two, two very different Indias. And from that perspective, I think uh, focusing on urban plays at this point probably might be more practical. Again, rural India's uh, performance is a function of what the monsoon is going to be and that you, know, you and I can't predict that. But fact is, uh, I think banks, as you said rightly, uh, because... The FII selling is concentrated uh, along the most liquid names, and uh, no prices for guessing. It's banks and IT uh, stocks that will be the first to get hit, and I've been hit uh, for the past several months. So I would focus on these two uh, for sure. And I think mm. real estate, uh, if these stocks do have some correction, they've had a good run, but if they have a correction, I would look at that. I would also start looking at cement, given the oh. massive capex by the government of India uh, for FI24. Oh, cement will be an interesting space then. Uh, any other themes that you like, Gautam? You know, I recall you were talking about Maruti from the passenger vehicle space earlier. Even Bharti Airtel yeah. was something that you were positive on. Uh, you want to add to that list and you maintain the positive stance at least on both these two? I, I do. I, I think uh, 
Maruti may still have some challenges uh, because uh, you have uh, you know interest rates going up. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of cars sold in India are invariably financed, so there will be some impact on that. But like I said, at the same time, you have a Mercedes Benz, but you have still a three to six month waiting list. So the premium, high end premium and luxury segment is seems to be in a different orbit, and then then there's the rest of India, which is unfortunately or fortunately struggling at this point. So I think. Uh, I would hold off on Maruti right now, but uh, there are other op options within the auto space to look at. Uh, we've looked at two wheelers as well, uh, and we're still figuring out when's the right time to actually make uh, incrementally more investments there. Mm. All right, uh, just before we let you go, okay. In fact, that was my sure. question, right, on two wheelers. I mean, it's been <laughs> a, a big derating that's happened. Even if you look at the last couple of months, right, Hero Motor Corp has lost about, yeah. what, 20% of its value already this year. Um, right. You're looking to invest there despite all the talk about, you know, the possibility of a slow monsoon, the El Nino, the hit on rural markets, all of that? But no, we're not looking at investing. I think we're studying and closely monitoring that sector because of the fact that the absolute underperformance has been so, so large that, uh, you know, it's a good time to actually look at stuff that hasn't really worked over the past uh, 12 to 24 months. I'm not saying necessarily uh, the two stocks, i.e. Uh, Bajaj uh, or Euro Motor Corp are buys. DBS has all obviously done extremely well, but I'm looking at the other two underperformers and uh, you know we're just monitoring at this point. Okay, all right, uh, Gautam, we will wrap it up on that note then for this morning. Thank you very much for joining in and giving us Thank your you. perspectives. That's a, that's a lot of caution and I think caution that's well taken uh, given the market is doing what it is.